Hey guys, I'm back today with another review for Arteza. They reached out to me again and sent me these two products. Um, I have done previous reviews. I'll have those videos linked below if you're interested or pop them up here every so often and linked at the end. I've done three videos. I've done other watercolors, fine tip pens, their water brushes, which I love these, love them to death. They're wonderful, and I've even reviewed their glitter. So today we have more watercolors there in the little pots, which I'll open these in a second. And we have some more watercolor paper, but um, this is 100% cotton. So let's go ahead and open this, and I'll show you. Um, like I said, there's 36. It includes a water brush pen, which makes me happy because I love their water brush pens. And on the back, it has all the colors which include a great range of colors. So let's go ahead and open this. Okay, so it comes in this pan and you open it like this and open it. Here's a template again of all the colors and then here are your little pans. Here's your water brush and these come out. Okay. So what's cool about this is if you are actually a watercolorist, you paint on canvas, is this. You can actually hold the palette like this as you paint. I'm thinking that's what it's for. Yeah, you would, I would probably remove this sheet. So you could pop this out. And that way when you're holding it, if you choose to work this way, and if that's really what it's used for, I'm assuming that's what it is, you can hold it in your hand like this and work on it. And this is other pans you could use. In addition to these, I'm sure you could use these pans as well. Um, but these would be probably more practical for mixing and all that. So we're going to work with these today. Very excited about that. And the paper we're going to work with is the Arteza 100% Cotton cold press watercolor paper. So it says it's ideal for watercolor techniques and mixed media. Um, I wanted to mention it came wrapped up in plastic and it had these on it, on each corner, which is really nice because there's something worse than getting paper and having the corners bent up. So this is quite a thick pack. It's 140 pounds, quite a thick pack, about half an inch for only 14 sheets. So these are quite thick sheets. Um, I, the, I do have some 100% uh, cotton watercolor paper. Um, the watercolor paper I have is from Michaels. It's smaller and it's it's pricey. I know Michaels has like a pack of watercolor paper that's 100% cotton that's over $80. So this stuff is 100% cotton can be really pricey. Um, Arteza, I, in my opinion, their prices for their products are very fair. Um, and I think I like their products. So this, like comparing it to regular watercolor paper, it's very soft, very textured. It just feels, feels different, feels nice. And I know it will perform different. I noticed that when I used my other watercolor paper. So we're going to go ahead and make a Christmas card because I want to continue with my Christmas series. And we're going to use this stamp set by Honey Bee. This is Silent Night. So this stamp set's huge and it has some big images that I wanted to watercolor. I will be bringing in my little bucket. I have the Arteza water brush pens, but I also in here have Arteza, the real thin markers, fine markers. Probably won't be using these because they are so tiny, but if you wanted to watercolor small, and I may for these, but watercoloring small images like this, they come in handy. But uh, for the most part, I'll be using my water brush pens, which I love. All right, so I've gone ahead and put this in my Mini Misty. This Deer stamp set's pretty big. I don't have a stamping block that is big enough. I do have the Fisker Stampin' Press, but 
Um, I didn't want to get it out because I'm lazy. So I'm just going to use my Misty. That way I can make sure that I get a really good impression. Since this paper is textured, more than likely you're not going to get a good impression if you just take a block and stamp it. So um, we're going to use the Misty so we can stamp it a couple times. And that's with any textured paper. I'm using Versa Fine Onyx Black Ink. It's watercolor marker or watercolor friendly. I don't, I'm just stamping these images. I don't know if I'm going to use them all. I don't really know what type of card I'm going to make. So again, um, first time is not the best. So we're going to ink it up. I may actually re-ink my uh, ink pad and see if that helps because it's not as vibrant. So let's see. Okay, ink pad is re-inked. Let's hope that I don't ruin it because now it's too juicy. Okay, here are my images, and I have the paint up here off camera, and I'll just be dipping into the, the colors with my water brushes or paintbrush, and I'm going to get both out. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this tray out. I'm not going to use the palettes for today. That way you can kind of have the colors in screen and kind of see what I'm using, and that way I'm not reaching over. So I'm going to play music and then I'll talk here and there, but I'm not going to be able to have talk the whole time. And I'll let you know my thoughts. So we're going to go ahead and start with the deer. And uh, this is my first time using the paints, the watercolors in like a pot like this or a, a little pod. I usually just um, use it in the like the circular container or the tubes. Um, and the tubes were... From Arteza, I really like the tube. The tube watercolors were very pretty. Well, there's a lot of pigment on these, which is nice. And I am not an expert at watercolors. I don't know. Um, I know, um, you know, the cheaper watercolors. It takes a lot more of the color to build it up. And these are definitely nice. A little goes a long way. I've only dipped in once or twice. And I'm liking the way it's looking. Um, for me with watercolor, it's easier to go light first. I don't want to go to go too dark. Of course, with watercolor is nice because you can also thin it out. I know um, every time I do something with watercolor, somebody comments that they're afraid to try watercolors. To me, it's probably one of my favorite mediums because it is so forgiving. If you go too dark, you can add more water and lighten it up. And if you go too light, you can add more color. So I'm going to go ahead and play music and fast forward and I'll keep coloring this and then let you know my thoughts as I go. So what I'm doing here is when you see me come in with a paper towel, 
that's just a way of lifting some of the color. Um, I should have, and I didn't think about it till now, when you watercolor it's best to tape your paper down because there is a little warping but obviously that's going to happen with adding water to your paper. Oops. And like this is too yellow, it's not what I'm wanting to go for, so I just add more water and kind of lighten up the color. I really wanted a kind of a beige, a beige color. So I'm just squeezing out my pen on a paper towel off the side and just lightening that color. What you can also do is, and what I would suggest doing, is dry in between colors, especially if you um, have a light and a dark next to each other. Like I keep having my brown bleed in to my yellow here. So I'm just coming in with clear water and kind of trying to scoop that up. You can also take your paper towel and dab it, and that will usually work. But then you'll have to go back in and add some color back to it carefully. And so I have like little weird splotches, um, which I get with any paper I use. And I'm just going to go in and add more color and kind of try to smooth that out. Um, I'm really liking the paper a lot. I will say this, um, with watercolor paper, oh geez, with watercolor paper, um, it doesn't peel. Uh, I'll, let me rephrase. It, well, it takes a lot longer to start peeling. I've used watercolor paper and it has peeled because, you know, the more color, the more water you add to it, it's just naturally going to do it. And I've been adding a lot of water to this and there is no indication of any type of peeling. Like I said, with watercolor paper, it takes longer for it to actually pill. But if you add enough water and keep working with it, in my experience, remember I'm no expert, in my experience, you can get pilling at times um, when you you know work it a lot. And this hasn't done anything. And I've added quite a bit of water to this. So I'm going to go ahead and clean up some areas and then we'll continue. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and color the tree, or paint the tree, I should say. I'm coming in with a, a bigger brush, since this is a pretty easy image to color, and I can kind of go wild. I'm really impressed with these watercolors, and. As always, no matter who sends me what to review, I'm going to be honest with you. Um, because I would hate for you, like I've said many times before, I would hate for you to get a product and it's horrible. And I was raving about how good it was because I wanted you to buy it. So, um, please know that my review is honest. It's not going to... And of course, these are my own thoughts. Like I said, I'm not an expert at watercoloring. So if you are and you have your, your types of colors you like, then by all means, you'll be more knowledgeable than me. But I'm really liking these. But I was, you know, I wouldn't, I'm not surprised that I like them because I really liked the tube watercolors they sent. Um, as far as the paper, paper's great. I think it's kind of neat to be working on... <laughs> 
cotton paper, 100% uh, cotton paper. Um, I know it, certain brands are really pricey, so it's nice to have an affordable option if you do want to try the cotton. Um, it does come in only 14 sheets. They are 9 by 12, but a little goes a long way. You know, I'm just doing these small images. If you were to create larger projects, you would run through it a lot quicker, but... I know this paper will last me quite a while. I'm just kind of playing around with different colors. I don't know how that's transferring on camera. But again, this paper is warping where the tree is, so I'm adding a lot of water and it's the paper is perfect. There's no pilling going on. It's just really holding it up well. And I'm sure that has a lot to do with it being cotton. Again, as you can tell, I have a lot of water on the paper because when I drop that color, it immediately spread. Um, that makes me nervous just because when it does that, you kind of lose control. And I think that's why a lot of people don't like watercoloring that I've heard from is that it, it, you have to give up a little bit of control. Um, so if you want more control, go in with a dryer brush. And then I try my best to add shading. Um, I've kind of found if you dry it in between, like I'll dry this and then come back and layer on more color, that's where you'll get your darker, darker tones. So we'll try that. Plus I have a little brown bleeding into my tree. Oh, and I forgot to mention, and I should have done this because I usually do it. If you heat emboss, um, you can either, if I, so I stamp this in black, you can heat emboss it in clear or heat emboss it in black. And that creates like a little barrier. Everywhere you see these black lines from your stamp, that creates a barrier to your image. And I used to do that all the time. I don't know why I don't think about it anymore. But that's a great way to kind of help your colors from seeping together. Okay, so I have my paper. I did this, but I've changed my mind. And I'm going to do this on the less textured side. But what I wanted to do first was I wanted to use the stamp and the stamp set. What did I do with it? Here it is. It's like falling snow and I wanted to heat emboss that. So let's do that really quick. So I'm going to do some watercoloring. I brought in my palette to use my palette so I can get color on it and then pick it up from there. But this is going to be very subtle, this stamp um, that I did. But I, it just adds a little something and it should resist when I go over it with the watercolors. And I wanted to kind of do a night sky.
All right, so here it is, and then the, the stamp is cool, but it's not enough for me. So I did pull out my white acrylic paint. Now it's probably really old, so hopefully it's still white. But this I just got from Hobby Lobby, it was, uh, eight ounces, $2.99. Okay, I've gone ahead, here is my card panel, and I have attached a piece of fun foam. I always do this when working with watercolor paper because watercolor paper will warp, and the fun foam having that full coverage allows it for it to become straighter. So I've added some wide double-sided tape that I like to use as well when I use paper that warps easily. I'm just using, putting this on a white card base, A2 size, so five and a half by four and a quarter. Um, I'm gonna do something a little different. I have this frame, I don't know. It's not necessary, but I thought I'm gonna do it anyway. <laughs> it's different. So I'm gonna attach that frame there in a moment. Here's my tree, I went ahead, I fussy cut everything out. I went ahead and Add attach the ornaments. I'm going to add some adhesive all along the tree. Oh wait, I wanted to do this first. I did a snow bank. How did I want to do this? And that will complete my card. So, final thoughts. Okay, final thoughts on the watercolor paper. I really liked it, and if you're in the market for trying 100% cotton watercolor paper, I would definitely give this a shot. I would recommend this if you are in the market, like I said. Um, the texture was nice. The I'll show it up close to the card. I think it came out really well. You can see slight texture on the paper. Um, like I said, absolutely no pilling. Typically you won't get that with watercolor paper, but if you work it enough, it will start to fall apart. Um, but I'm really pleased. I like on the background, I use the, the side with less texture and I like the way that looks. So I like that the texture is not a lot. Um, it's just slight, which is nice, and that's on the both sides, one having less than the other. It's a nice heavyweight cardstock, so um, definitely would recommend, like I said, if you are in the market for trying 100% cotton, which I think is kind of cool. All right, for the watercolors, if you like the pan style watercolors, I think these are great. It's a 36, they are $34.99. Uh, I don't know how that compares to other brands, but I. I always look at something, would I pay that? And if I was in the market for these types of watercolors, I would not think that's a bad price. That's less than a dollar per color. And these are deep pans and they'll go a long way. I like the whole setup. I like that it comes with a br uh, this brush. I love the brush pens from Arteza. They're my favorite and they're affordable. That's probably one of the big reasons why I like them because like I said the brush tips can be quite pricey depending on where you get them um, but I like the layout this especially this does not take up any room at all 
So I do like that because my craft room is overflowing with stuff. I thought the colors came out very vibrant. If I had to be picky, like I said, I wish there was a, a gray, but you could work that out with a lighter um, using black. Just do it on your palette and really um, dull it out. Same thing with, a, I wish there was a beige, which you can get from brown. If I'm being like really ridiculously nitpicky. So if you're in the market for these types of watercolors, definitely recommend, um, especially for the size, because it does take up so little space and I love how everything is connected here with the palette. I don't work standing up um, or at a, at a um, what do you call it, an easel. I work on a desk so this is handy and the fact that I can pop this out, if this gets a little too much, I can pop this out and kind of put it near my work area. So if you're interested in any of the products, they will be listed below. I appreciate Arteza for sending me these items. Like always, I was very pleased. I've been very pleased with their products, and I hope that if you've purchased something um, from my video with Arteza that you have been pleased as well. Like I said, I try to be completely honest with you guys. Um, and again, these are all my opinions. If you're an everyday crafter like me, I think these are great. So. Links will be below, listed below for the products. Check out my other Arteza videos if you're interested. They do ship free in the United States and they do ship worldwide. Also, there is a coupon code down below if you would like to purchase anything. Um, definitely use that coupon code. It is a limited amount of time that it is good. And just to be completely transparent, I do use affiliate links. Um, I have that listed in every description box of my videos, way down at the bottom. But um, when you click on a link and make a purchase, it does help me a little continue making videos and buying products so I can continue making videos for you guys. So let me know what you think. Let me know if you grab anything. Um, I will list everything I used in this video, including the items they sent me. And let me know if you have questions, and I'll catch you guys next time.